Good morning and welcome to St Stephen's on Father's Day. So a happy Father's Day to our fathers amongst us and for those who have been like a father to others this morning. And I hope that you uh, will be, um, yeah, have some nice treats. I'm not sure that my husband will because he's here this morning rather than at home with my son. Um, but we'll see how the day unfolds. So let us uh, begin our worship as we say our opening prayer together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So I invite you to stand if you're able to sing our first hymn, which is in the Orange Book number 84. And we're going to sing this through twice. Father God, I wonder. <laughs> his own. So let us confess our sins together as we say, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins. May he heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and may he raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. And the special prayer for today. Faithful creator, whose mercy never fails, 
deepen our faithfulness to you and to your living word, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we remain seated now as Helen comes and leads us and comes to give us our readings. First reading is from Exodus chapter 19, verses 2 to 8. And if you want to find that in the Pew Bibles, it's on page 76. After they set out from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai, and Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God, and the Lord called him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob, and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt, and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. Although the earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you are to speak to the Israelites. So Moses went back and summoned the elders of the people and set before them all the words the Lord commanded him to speak. The people all responded together, We will do everything the Lord has said. So Moses brought their answer back to the Lord. And the second reading is from Romans 5, verses 1 to 8. And you can find that in the Pew Bibles on page 1132. Been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Please stand for the gospel. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. 
Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Jesus called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So we remain standing for our next hymn, which will be on the screen. Praise is rising. reading this morning we hear of Jesus continuing in his ministry 
accompanied by his faithful disciples. And we're told that Jesus spends his time traveling through towns and villages where he teaches in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom. He also heals the sick and helps to clear diseases. It's interesting when we hear about um, his instructions to the disciples, they're not told to cure those with leprosy, but to cleanse those with leprosy. And the crowds Jesus encounters touch his heart, and out of compassion, he responds to them. How could he not where there were so many people in need? He sees that they're lost, looking for something, and he knows that he can help. So he decides to share with his disciples, and he says these words, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his fields. Now the disciples, as we know, aren't always the quickest at picking up what Jesus is saying. So they may not have grasped what he was getting at initially. But they were about to become the workers who would be sent out to share the good news of the kingdom with many added to their numbers. So Jesus calls the disciples together and gives them authority to drive out impure spirits, to heal every disease and sickness. Now it's interesting that Matthew feels it's really important that we know exactly who is being chosen for this task and he lists them by name. And not only that, he tells us what Jesus' instructions to them were. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely you give. Now Jesus has spent nearly three years with them by this time and so he's confident of their abilities and so he's happy to send them out to begin their own ministries of teaching, healing and sharing the gospel. They'd seen him in action. They'd seen how people responded to him. The only thing they hadn't done was do it themselves. And I'm sure if we cast our minds back, can we all remember our first day at work? We didn't know what we were doing, but over time, watching others doing the job for ourselves, we learned what we should be doing. Now the disciples were under no illusions. They knew what they were being asked carried risks. And they knew the reality of what they were going to be facing. So they go forward with vulnerability traveling light and will be depending on the hospitality of others. Now I wonder how they felt. Did they think, yeah, we've got this, we know what we're doing. Were they excited? Thankfully at last, we're off to do what we've been hoping and praying for. Or were they nervous? Were they worried? Because they were stepping out in faith, but they knew they weren't on their own in that task because they were people of faith. And if you like, they had done an apprenticeship and now they were ready to move on, encouraged by Jesus and his words. Go and share the gospel, which literally means share the good news. The prophet Isaiah had prophesied that the Messiah would come in the power of the Holy Spirit to bring freedom to the afflicted who suffered from physical, mental, or spiritual oppression. Jesus had come to set people free, not only from their physical, mental, and spiritual infirmities, but also from the worst affliction of all, the slavery to sin. And God's power alone can save us from hopelessness, rejection, and an empty life because the gospel of salvation is good news to those that receive it. 
St. Paul tells the Philippians that their attitude should be the same as Christ's. They need to learn to love each other because he'd heard about the strife and discord within their fellowship together. So he writes encouraging words, focused on their fellowship and telling them to live in Christian harmony with one another. And this is echo too in John's Gospel, chapter 13, verses 34 to 35. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. And we're called to love God with all our heart, with all our understanding, with all our strength and us too to love our neighbour as ourselves. And the work of the disciples and Paul's letter to the Philippians are an encouragement to us and our own lives today. Hearing how people have come to faith or how they live out their faith is always a great encouragement to us. So one simple thing we can all do today is to share our own story with one another about how we came to faith, or what coming to church means to us. Is it just something we do as a habit, or does it have a deeper meaning in our hearts this morning? But we too can feel nervous or worried about that task. We might not think our story is good enough, that we're worthy enough. But you'd be amazed at how sharing your story can impact somebody else. And just look at the Bible, Jesus the greatest storyteller, over 2,000 years ago, and yet the words in the Bible still impact people today. And sharing our story may not bring about a sudden change in someone else. I think there's an illusion, wrongly, that um, it's our responsibility to go around and convert everyone. It's not. Our job is to share. It's God's job to convert. And it could be many, many years before we see the fruits of that first conversation. So never be afraid to share. It might be something really simple when someone says, what did you do at the weekend? And you say, well, I went to church. And what a blessing that might be to someone else. And I love Desmond Tutu, and he said these words about a blessing. He said, do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good put together that overwhelm the world. And as you know, um, the church is focusing on a different charity each month, a charity that we support. And so I was writing this sermon, I was reflecting on, well, where do, where do we see faith in action? And so I was drawn to the Chichester District Food Bank website and I read this statistic that I found really shocking. It said that one in five of the UK population live below the poverty line. One in five. That's an awful lot of people. And then they had on their website that between April 2022 and March 2023, they actually provided 7,033 emergency food parcels to people who couldn't afford the essentials and 2,683 of those were children. And that's why it's so important for us as a church to continue to think about and to bless others by bringing in what we can to put into our food bank basket at the back. They have an initiative at the food bank thinking about the summer holidays fast approaching that they call holiday kids lunch packs and they provide 10 lunches for each school-aged child in, who would normally receive a free school meal over the summer holidays. And the Tressing Trust, who, who up is, overarches the food banks, they are trying to get their MPs across the UK to support the social security system that guarantees the essentials by making sure that the basic rate of universal credit is at least enough to afford the essentials that they need to live. 
Because as we know, it's not sustainable for a food bank to keep going and going. There will come a point where people can't afford to give, and yet there'll be more and more people needing. So I think they're looking at ways of how they can make a difference. Now, while in our context for ministry, things have changed radically since those 12 disciples were sent out. But Jesus' commission is the same. Are we ready and willing to do what God is calling us to do across our benefits? Are we aware that God is in it? Are we aware that we are called to make a difference? Through all the many challenges that we face as a church, wouldn't it be amazing if we could see the fruit, if we could be the workers and bring more fruit to the harvest? So I encourage all of us to share our stories of what faith means to us with others. And together, as we encourage one another, let us make a difference so that lives can be changed for the better. Amen. <clears throat> So please stand as we affirm our faith by saying the words of the creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated as Terry leads us in prayer. in heaven, hear our prayers this day and every day. We thank you this special day when we honour or remember our earthly fathers. We thank you for their love, strength and support in times of need, as we thank you for our Heavenly Father when you watch over us and guide us in times of need. Forgive us, Lord, if we have not always been loyal and faithful children to you. We pray for fathers everywhere, especially if they are separated from their children through no fault of their own. We especially pray for fathers caught up in conflict in war-torn countries, and we pray for their safety and unity with their families in all your good time. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. Dear Lord, 
We ask for your loving mercy and grace on the North Koreans who are entrapped in their own country, unable to be free to leave and find a new and safer life in other countries. Like the people of Ukraine and other countries ruled or dominated by aggression and dictatorship, we pray for relinquishment, for justice and for peace. We pray that all who do not respect free will in their fellow man will understand the evil in which they persecute and destroy lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, we pray for the souls of those who have died in the re refugee boat disaster in Greece. Place your hand over the survivors and those who mourn for the dead. We live in traumatic times when everybody, every day there is news of tragedy. We pray for all whose lives are destroyed by the action of others through anger, misguidance and ignorance. We pray for families where innocent children have died tragically and cruelly, by those who are suppressed, supposed to love, nurture and care for them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we thank you and pray for our children and their children that they will always know love and support and understanding. We ask for your love and guidance on all young people entering the final weeks of their school exams and preparing for a new step into the world of adulthood. We pray for all leaving university to, see, to follow careers and seek new ventures in this country and throughout the world. Lord, watch over them and guide them. We thank you for our families and our friends those we know and love, and who love us. Always, always we present in their lives, always be present in their lives, especially when there is a special need. And we, we pray today for all who have died recently. In a moment of silence, we ask for peace and solace on those known to us. Merciful Father, and accept these prayers for, for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the peace. We are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people that we may proclaim the mighty acts of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvellous light. Gathered as his people, we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Please share a sign of peace with one another. And we remain standing to sing our next hymn where the collection will be taken. It's in the Green Book, number 115, Eternal Ruler of the Ceaseless Round. <laughs>
The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord, as a mother tenderly gathers her children. You embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From then you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to suffer with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Loving Father, we thank you for, the fe for feeding us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us with your Spirit, that we may serve you here on earth until our joy is complete in heaven, and we share in the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ our Lord. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. So I'm coming down for notices. So in case you haven't signed up yet and you would like to come to the away day, I can't believe it's actually next Saturday. Where has the time gone? So if you'd like to come and find out about prayer, if you'd like to come and eat lovely cake, have a picnic, have a really lovely time as a church family, then please can you sign the list at the back of church. It's next Saturday at St John's Church in Southbourne. We can arrange lifts if you require a lift, 10 o'clock till 3 o'clock. And we'll be feeding back about our day in the service next Sunday. We are having, this is very exciting, an organ recital here on the 8th of July. Um, Tim Stewart is the cathedral uh, scholar at the moment. And he will be giving an hour's recital on the, oh, thank you, look, we've even got a slide. Um, here, three till four. Uh, there's no charge to come, we're just asking for donations, uh, and that will go to church funds, and there will be refreshments after. So if you want to come and hear the organ sounding amazing, then please put that in your diary. Anything else, church wardens, that I need to mention? Nothing. Fabulous. Okay, so it gives me great pleasure to be able to um, announce some bands of marriage. It's lovely that Bex and John are with us this morning, so nice to see you. So I published the bands of marriage between Jonathan Cork, whose previous marriage was dissolved, and Rebecca Flint, and they are both from this parish. This is for the third time of asking if anyone, if any of you know, of any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to be carried. That's the right answer. So let's pray for John and Bex. Father, we lift John and Bex to you today as they prepare for their marriage together, and we ask that they will be surrounded by your love, that you will guide their thoughts, and that they will have a long and happy married life together. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> so we're now going to sing our final hymn, and I don't have my word number with me. 221 in the, in the Green Book. I am a new creation, and we're going to sing that through. To oh, no! And <laughs> sing.
Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, who was wounded for our sins, that you may bear in your life the love and joy and peace, which are the marks of Jesus in his disciples, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.